Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Hollow, and today I'm gonna be teaching you guys about the top five mistakes that people make when trying to improve their aim in Apex Legends, or really any first person shooter game. I happen to main Apex Legends, so that's the game that we're gonna be going over today specifically. I'm gonna be running around in the firing range going over what these mistakes are and teaching you guys how to fix them. Because obviously, it'd be pretty rude of me to point out the things that I think you're doing wrong in your gameplay without offering you solutions. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so mistake number one when trying to improve your aim is the idea of focusing on your crosshair more than you focus on your target. And I, when I say that, I quite literally mean focusing on your crosshair with your eyeballs as opposed to looking at your target with your eyeballs. It seems like a pretty simple concept, uh, but I feel like a lot of people struggle with this and I feel like it gets in the way of their aiming improvement and I'll explain why. So whenever you are aiming, let's say you're aiming down sights and you have this very definitive red dot reticle in the middle of your screen, and the red dot reticle is what you're focusing on. What you're doing is you're taking away from your ability to look at your target instead, uh, and you're taking away from your ability to read, recognize, and react to how your target might change direction within a specific movement pattern. So for example, if I'm strafing left and right, this is like a close strafe, uh, and someone was looking at me as opposed to their crosshair, they would have a much easier time reacting to my changes of direction within this specific movement pattern, as well as uh, changes in that movement pattern in of itself. If I start jumping, if I decide to make, maybe to have a longer strafe uh, to the left or to the right, focusing on your target as opposed to your crosshair is going to allow you the opportunity to better uh, react to whatever movements your target is making in front of you. The way that I look at the crosshair is that it's this reminder of where the center of your screen is, and it isn't necessarily something that you should rely on to know where that center point in your screen is. If you want to fix this problem, and if you want to better work on your ability to be in tune with where the center of your screen is without necessarily having to hyper focus on your crosshair i would definitely recommend going into an aim trainer and just turning your crosshair off in the aim trainer and play uh tracking exercises that's definitely going to help your ability to be in tune with the center of your screen obviously you're going to want to have some feedback like um you know hit sounds or whatever that allow you to know when you are or are not hitting the target uh, but yeah that's a really good way to fix that problem this kind of a mistake isn't necessarily a mistake at longer ranges. Like, for example, um, if I am looking at this target here, I have to be pretty mindful of where my crosshair is uh, above the target so that I can properly lead up enough to be able to hit it. And this is obviously more applicable to targets at long range. Like, let's say I grab a Kraber and I have someone moving and jumping around in front of me. I need to be mindful of where my crosshair is relative to where they are, but I at no point in time I'm gonna be cross-eyeing on my crosshair as much as I am going to be hyper-focusing on how my target is moving. And that's how a lot of times I hit the shots that I do or track people the way that I do because I'm just so focused on how they're moving and I'm not necessarily worried about where my crosshair is or my reticle is because I already know where the center of my screen is for the most part. All right, mistake number two that people make when trying to improve their aim is the idea of using a sensitivity that is either too high or too low. Now, before I go into uh, why exactly too low is bad or too high is bad, let's go ahead and kind of set that boundary. Um, I play on 800 DPI, my mouse's DPI is 800, so that's the, the reference for my in-game sensitivity multiplier. Um, I personally think that anything between 800 DPI 1.0 and 800 DPI 2.0 is a sort of safe zone. It's safe, it's, a, it's an acceptable range, it covers a variety of lower sensitivities, a variety of mid-range sensitivities, and it goes a little bit into the higher sensitivity category. Uh, anything below that, uh, and you're kind of getting into the territory of your sensitivity being too low, and anything higher than that, and you're kind of getting into the territory of your sensitivity being too high. All right, now, why exactly is a sensitivity that is considered too low based on that sort of range bad. Well, whenever you change your sensitivity, let's just go to 800 DPI 0.2 as an exaggeration. 
uh, what I'm doing when I change my sensitivity to be as low as this is, is I'm making my mouse much less sensitive to how I'm moving it, which means that I have to put in a lot more work to make these simple motions. Like, in order to just do a 360, I'm cranking my arm all the way across my mouse pad. Obviously, this isn't a realistic example of what sensitivities people are going to be playing, um, but this kind of an issue um, is much more accurately reflected by a lower sensitivity, like 0 0.2, where, you know, I'm having to put in a lot of physical work to be able to just move my mouse around, and um, it's getting to the point where, or, I mean, it's gotten to the point where I've sacrificed my range of motion so unbelievably much that anything outside of this small cone in front of me, I can't track or aim at without having to move my mouse all the way across my mouse pad in sort of a swiping motion. And so, you know, even if you're going down to say like 0 0.8, which at 800 dpi, which is around 65 centimeters per 360, it's a little bit more realistic of an example. You know, I can't even really do a full 360 on my mouse pad. And obviously, you know, you don't necessarily want to be doing full 360s while you're aiming, but it's generally a good rule of thumb that if you can't do one whole 360 on your mouse pad, your sensitivity is a little bit too low. You're sacrificing your range of motion quite a bit and you are also a lot of times using it maybe as a cover-up for how much physical control you lack over your mouse. So a lot of people uh, play a lower sensitivity because it gives them this impression that it's more accurate or you're more consistent with it. When in reality, you know, you're still shaking your mouse around in the same bad ways on a lower sensitivity as you would on a high sense, but you know, it's just not coming through in your gameplay as much because you are making your mouse much less sensitive to how you move it. And I myself am even guilty of this playing 1.2 at 800 at times. I know that I could definitely be playing higher, but hey, you know, we all have our things that we're trying to work on. Now, a sensitivity that is too high, you I mean, we'll just crank it up to 20 to kind of exemplify this. You're going to get into the territory where you're pixel skipping um, and where your mouse is almost too sensitive to how you move it. And it gets to a point where no matter how heavy your mouse is, no matter what you're comfortable with, no matter how small your mouse pad is, there are just sensitivities that are just way too high. I see people that might do really, really well with single fire weapons like the Sentinel. They have the ability to move around, you know, on a 360 degree plane very proficiently on a crazy high sense. So they'll come over here, they'll pick up their Sentinel, right? And, you know, they might be able to get a headshot here and there, right? They might be able to hit their shots with this kind of a weapon. Uh, but give them a tracking weapon like the car and, you know, their aim looks like this, right? And you don't really want to have that happen. So don't, don't crank your sensitivity up too high. I know that I was talking about my range being anywhere between 800 DPI 1.0 and 800 DPI 2.0. But honestly, you know, going up to 2.5, 800 DPI is what I would consider to be like the upper limit, at least for people that are trying to improve their aim. I wouldn't really bother going past that. If you have the, if you have the mouse control to be able to do that, if you have enough physical control over your mouse to be able to proficiently operate at those higher sensitivities, then by all means, go for it. The, you know, that tip's not for you, but if you're struggling, if your aim is shaky, turning down your sensitivity a little bit and making your mouse a little bit less sensitive to how you're moving it might offer a platform from which to work on other issues rather than just suffering from your aim looking like this all the time. All right, so mistake number three that a lot of people make when trying to improve their aim is they flick instead of track with single fire weapons. So this includes weapons like the wingman. This includes weapons like shotguns, like the mastiff, as well as sniper rifles at close range, obviously charge rifle excluded because it's a single, uh, well, I mean, it's a hit scan weapon, the, the giant laser. This bad habit, by the way, also translates into burst weapons because what happens is whenever you're using a single fire weapon or a burst weapon, there's a lot of downtime between shots. So so if I take the bolt off my Mastiff and I shoot, there's a pretty considerable amount of downtime between when I can shoot and when I can shoot again. And so what a lot of people do during this downtime is they're very wasteful with their mouse movement. They will flick up and away from their target, they'll move their mouse on a circle, they'll look away from their target and then look back, instead of just tracking. Just track with your Mastiff. Just track with your Wingman. Just focus on smoothly keeping your reticle on your target and only using erratic flicking as a way to either quickly acquire your target in the event that you're 
uh, crosshair isn't already on or near them, or flick as a way to correct in large errors in your tracking, right? Try not to deviate from the idea of just simply smoothly tracking your targets with these kinds of weapons, because uh, what will happen is you're gonna deal more damage, you're gonna be more consistent, and you're not gonna create as much of an opportunity for you to mess up because you're unnecessarily moving your mouse such greater distance as opposed to just simply keeping it on your target at all times, right? That's something that I see a lot of people doing is they just unnecessarily flick their mouse around in ways that they don't need to be with uh, weapons like the wingman and such. So that's mistake number three. All right, so mistake number four that I see people make when trying to improve their aim is they don't take enough time with their shots. And this is a tip that is also more specifically applicable to single fire weapons like the Mastiff or the Wingman or whatever. A lot of people will just try to shoot as fast as they possibly can in conjunction with the wasted mouse movement that we talked about earlier. And what happens is a lot of times they will miss their shots because of it. I have a saying that kind of helps people overcome this issue with not taking enough time with their shots. And it goes as follows. It's better to hit your shots very slowly than it is to miss them all very fast. So what that means is that it's better to take your time with each shot and have each shot be intentional and focused and purposeful and meaningful rather than to spam and try to max out your fire rate and just miss everything because you're not being intentional. In my opinion, it's better to hit your shots slowly and learn what it means to deal the most amount of damage possible with your mag and then just speed that up, right? So what you're doing is you're you're learning to walk, right? You're You're hitting these shots slowly and you're focusing on accuracy. And then as you learn to run, metaphorically, you speed that up, right? You're doing the right thing slowly, and then you're taking that right thing, and then you're just speeding it up. Obviously, you don't wanna go so slow so as to just die <laughs> to people that are spraying you down or whatever. You know, if you're playing cover with the wingman, though, this is an excellent way to kind of practice that, because again, you have cover, and you're not taking an uninterrupted line of sight engagement where people can just beam you down. You obviously wanna make sure that you're not putting yourself in a position to die, but take your time with your shots, take your time with your shotgun shots, utilize crosshair positioning as well. Put your crosshair in the best possible position from which to begin or to continue dealing damage to your target and you are going to find that the damage that you deal is more consistent and then you just speed that up as you go and you'll struggle with these kinds of weapons a lot less all right and for the last and final mistake that i see uh people making when trying to improve their aim is stressing themselves out about how fast they're improving. This isn't necessarily a technique-based tip, it's more of a mental thing, and I think it's really important to go over. There are a lot of people that put so much pressure on themselves to improve very, very fast, or they are discouraged by how slow their progress is, or maybe they're hitting a plateau that they're not really happy with, and I'm here to tell you that as someone with 10,000 hours in first-person shooter games alone at the bare minimum Taking your time is the best piece of advice that I can give play to improve be smart with what you're doing increase the concentration at which you're able to uh, practice certain skill sets and 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 be active focused mindful and intentional with how you improve but don't waste your time stressing yourself out about oh i need to be this good by this time or you know i'm gonna give myself a month to learn how to track people smoothly and if i can't do that then i'm just gonna you know quit like take your time try your best to just be better than you were yesterday even if it's not in your aim itself even if it's just in your knowledge of your own aim uh try your best to learn something new every day to do just a tiny bit better than you did yesterday and you will find a lot of success the idea of getting great aim or really accomplishing any great thing in life is not going to be done through crazy large bursts that are done erratically and inconsistently you're not going to have a major breakthrough every week or every month or every year even for some what you're going to do is you're going to instead of focus on the idea of hitting like a crazy spurt or constantly beating your high score or whatever what you need to do instead is just do a pretty ordinary thing for a pretty unordinarily long period of time just log on put your hours in practice 
practice with intention, practice with focus, but don't stress yourself out too much. And then just do that for a long period of time over and over again. And you'll be able to look back on yourself and say, wow, that worked <laughs> because that's what worked for me. That's how it's pretty much gone for a lot of other great aimers is they just have so many hours of experience. Don't stress yourself out, you know, burn yourself out either with trying to, uh, you know, practice as much as uh, you think you need to. Just focus on putting in a consistent amount of hours on a consistent amount of days, on a consistent amount of weeks, on a consistent amount of months, on a consistent amount of years. It takes time, I promise. And that concludes the top five aiming mistakes that people make when trying to improve their aim in Apex or really any FPS game. If you disagreed with anything that I said or if there's something that you struggle with specifically, feel free to leave a comment. I'll be lurking in there and I'll try to give you guys as much help as I possibly can. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.